All right, here we go. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the live stream. And today, we will continue with modeling our bar. But this time around, though, I'm going to do two things different. First things is, uh, well, last stream, somebody mentioned something about getting our scene into Unreal, so which made me think about the idea, and I actually like the idea. So what I'm going to do is, uh, first of all, let me just open up the scene that we were working on. What I'm going to do is start modeling things that can be later on translated into Unreal. So this is what we have so far uh, made in our uh, streams. We have quite a bit of uh, things made for the interior and stuff. So for the exterior, now I'd like to create the tables and uh, seating for the exterior. And one of the things that I did like uh, in the last stream that we saw was uh, these types of benches. We, like we got uh, chairs like this one, very similar to this one. And the great thing is that there is also a table like this one, which more or less looks like it's made from the same uh, design as the, uh, the seating bench. So I'm gonna create these uh, assets but I'm going to create them with Unreal in mind. So whatever we uh, decide to uh, do with it later, we can either use it for rendering or we can put it in Unreal and see how the thing is going to look in there as well. So for now, I'm actually going to start off with creating this thing. And since I can see that it's, it's going to be reused, uh, it's going to make things uh, easier for us. And this is uh, actually, it's a really uh, simple model because all it has is just some shapes that we can just like sketch out from uh, splines, get some, give them some thickness and we get this thing. Hey David, hey, so, uh, hey Sean, so uh, this thing again we can just do it with a spline and pretty much everything here is uh, pretty self-explanatory, it's going to be box modeling so it's not going to be anything to... Hey Dennis! Ah, now we got two Dennis's in the group. Yeah, boy. All right, how many people are, do we have on the live stream? All right, we got 20 people with me. Awesome. Hey to everybody. All right, so uh, here is what I'm going to do. We got a second David. It's all in the D, man. It's all in the D. If you got a D in the name, you're welcome. All right, so what I want to do here though, is I'm going to start off in a new scene because I want to model just the chair. Hey, sir. Yashi, sir. Welcome back. So what I, uh, what I was saying is I want to model the elements for uh, up here. And also uh, one of the other things that I did see, uh, I think it was like a few days ago, uh, I went over to a bar and they had one of those uh, covers for the top here, which was like uh, fabric, which kind of gave me the idea of how I want to get this thing uh, covered up in here. So we're probably going to get that cover uh, on the ceiling here and we're going to make some seating arrangements for the exterior that's going to be with the boat. Uh, idea right so something like this so let's start off what i'm going to do is just reset my uh scene so i can start off on a new scene and then later on uh, once i have uh, the entire asset done we can just import it back into uh, our uh, actual main scene all right now uh since i don't really have the sizes or pretty much anything for this uh, asset. I don't even have the name, it's just something that's uh, more or less custom. We're gonna have to uh, ask Google for a bit of help. And a bit of help would be what is the seating height for the bench? So let's do it that way. So it says, Guideline specific bench 17 and oh, Jesus, Jesus. 
So it's uh, 17 to 19, 17 being 43, 19 being 48. All right, so 45. Okay, 45 centimeters for that thing, and another 45 upwards. Yeah, why not? All right, so a box would go 45 and 45 would be 90, and I just put in one thing in the middle. There you go. All right, so. The 90 would be the height for this thing. And this line would be smack in the middle, which would be more or less the seating uh, height. So with this in mind, it's gonna be okay. Hey, Norman. All right, so now let's, let me see the actual uh, bench. Seating dimensions. Let's put it this way. The area of the which is deep in between a uh, height seats should generally be between the and the height of the images in the dial. All right. Okay, so this is something I can work with. So it has about 34 inches. I hate inches. Just for the record, I hate working with inches, but fine. This is much better. You see, we got it more or less to where it was supposed to be. I got it to nine, uh, 90 centimeters, so it's, this is nine, uh, 95. And we are about five centimeters off, which is not bad at all. So we can work with that. So let's give it 95. All right, so if we have that thing, 450 is about 470. All right, more or less the height should be fine here. What is the angle? Do we know the angle? So 77. Yeah, this can work. In this case though, uh, we just see, we have no nope. there is no information about the length of the bench so I guess the length can be as much as we want it but since this is actually just a, a blank we can extend it to whatever uh, length we need but here's the funny thing the back sides are actually made out of paddles so maybe that can give me some uh, some idea battle dimensions yeah, let's see how big a paddle is. Rowboat paddles. So a paddle length. All right, there we go. What is this? What is the length? Paddle. Is it a kayak? Paddle linked. Hey Matt, what up, man? Now we are trying to find the length for a simple paddle. What would be? What would that thing be? Okay, maybe this. Is... No, we'll take the plate with no. Ah. Alright, so what the hell? So nobody's giving me any length. Most can always for a battle of 52 to 60 range size and typically offer uh, bench shaft pedals generally shorter to the shorter, wider blades, common lengths are 48 to 54. So 54, so 138. So oh, well, let's round it up 140 centimeters. So that thing means that in the length, no, nope, in the width is going to be 140. And the bench here is going to be 
Nah, it's okay. I, I don't need a, the, a good image. I was just like wondering about the uh, size for this thing because this would uh, basically dictate how long this thing is gonna be. But it's fine. It's, it's not really a big problem. Now, let me just quickly change one, two, three, four, five of these. So length wise. Yeah, let me just eyeball it. It's, it's going to be a bit too much. So 60. Yeah, I think 60 is going to be just enough. All right, well, let me uh, put this thing on the zero, zero, zero. And let me save it up because I'm pretty sure that somewhere down the road I'm going to be doing some stuff to it. So we'll see what happens with it. So Twitch, scene, and go chair. Battle chair, all one. All right, so basically what we have here uh, is going to be the placeholder for uh, our uh, bench and let's start off with first logically trying to uh, separate this thing so we have one two three four five different elements all right so let's start off with the thing that we know for a fact and that is the height for this thing now these planks here we have one two three four five they're going to be about the easiest thing that we can do. So I'm going to snap it right here. All right, like that. Now, for the height of these things, let's try with a five centimeter plank. So zero by zero, it's fine. Now, move it in position right there. Um, here's the thing though. When we are snapping it, make sure you snap it on the, the uh, on the top because we want the top to be uh, the seating uh, height. Just gonna put this thing to the side like that. All right. So once we have this, and this is gonna be the base on from which we can actually get our five planks. Easiest way would be just go in here, select, uh, connect, and go one two. One, two, three, four, five. All right, awesome. Now, isolate just this thing because we will not be needing the uh, other one at the moment. And just so I make it easier for me, I'm just going to chamfer these with a very small amount of like 0 0.3, maybe. Yeah, 0 0.3 is going to work. And just click on the open chamfer. This so is going to make sure that. Everything that's in, in between there is gonna be uh, capped off. So now, just get this thing, cap, cap, that's right, oh, no, no, not two. Just cap it like this. And take uh, into consideration the fact that I will try to uh, make this thing easier for me to basically get it ready to work it inside Unreal. So we're going to try to keep it as low uh, poly as possible. So even the baking is going to be easier for us. All right, so we have the bare, uh, bare basics for this. And now what I want to do is since this thing does not go all the way back, because if I take a look at my image here, you're going to notice that we have a bit of a slope here. It's not going all the way back. Just to make it simpler, I'm just gonna scale it inwards on the Y a bit. And now move it upwards till there. All right, so this should give us that size. Now, I want to put in that slope, which basically has a, a box or a plank going on the bottom here so let's put the box and let's check it out 
Now, I want to have five centimeters of length. So it's going to be the same width of this thing. I'm going to put a five on the height as well. There. Go on the X. Snap it in there. Okay. Next thing, we want to get this thing to go all the way up. But before I do that, I want to make sure that I have just five centimeters. So I'm going to hide this for a bit. And I can either put in something to help me find the five centimeters, or what I can do is get this thing, snap it right on the edge. So now it's flush with this thing. And I want to move it just five centimeters on that side. So what I'm going to do is right click on the move and on the Y just add in five centimeters. Now I know for a fact that this is exactly five centimeters. Now put in one edge and snap it over here. And this will allow me to basically extrude this portion outwards to whatever height that I need. And if I unhide my, there we go. And on the Y, just snap it there. All right, so that can help us with the actual uh, size for this thing. Now, another thing that I didn't notice is that uh, these paddles, which are basically the length of this thing, extend a bit further from the seating, which means that once we create the paddle, they're going to have the same length, but uh, that in turn means that I'm probably going to have to make these things a bit shorter or a bit smaller because uh, these wheels on the end will have to encompass that difference between the seating and the paddles for the backrest. So let's do it that way. Hey, three. 3D Max, well, this is weird. When 3D Max says hello, you gotta say hello back. Welcome to the stream, man. Now, let's, uh, well, let's just really quickly add in this uh, wheel, because it's really not that complicated to add in. And just go in a circle. Is that thing gonna be okay? That yeah, so let's start with a 28 radius. The rendering is fine. Just let's check out the interpolation. Let me put it here and check it out. Instead of going with the radial, let's try with rectangular, which is more what we want. The interpolations might be a bit high for now because, like I said, remember we want to get this thing to be ready for Unreal as well. So the, this thing can be something like let's try four centimeters, four centimeters, and the width eight, maybe. Yeah, this can be a nice base for this wheel. All right, so if I get it like this, now the radius can be a bit smaller because we want it, uh, we want this front to be flush with uh, in here. May you ask what is Unreal? If you do not know what Unreal Engine is, it's a game engine and more or less what uh, people have started using for uh, VR and AR and pretty much when they want to make their uh, job a lot easier. So 26, 25. Yeah, 25 centimeters I think looks more or less the best here. All right. I gotta close close up the window. Okay, give me one second and I'll be right back.
All right, here we go. All right, the, um, who said something about Unreal? Yeah, it's uh, Lil Yashi. It's a game engine. Pretty much, it's really, really powerful. And nowadays, a lot of people are like converting to using it instead of uh, conventional uh, uh, art viz for videos and whatever. Because, for example, if you want to make a video a walkthrough in Unreal uh, in uh, 3ds Max, and then compare it with uh, Unreal, there is no uh, there is no comparing them both because Unreal makes everything in real life and real time uh, opposed to having to spend hours and hours if not days and days rendering out the final output all right so now what was it yeah let's check the bench it's fine yeah, i think this is more or less fine for the height yeah, we can adjust this all right so this is going to be the base so let's add in some uh, edit polys ring this thing and loop and when we, when we loop this thing just jump for it once but the thing here is that i probably before i do this i probably want to go in here and uh decrease the interpolations for this thing because uh, we will be using uh We'll be using uh, Turbo Smooth to get more uh, uh, more geometry for the high poly, but for the low poly, I still don't want it to be jagged, so I just go one step down. So from six to five, it's gonna be five. Mm, uh, well, just like Khan said, uh, UE4 is much more advanced and easy. Than, uh, <laughs> I would not uh, say that Unreal Engine is easy. Uh, I would say that it's a very complete uh, tool because you can do a lot of a lot of things in it. For quite a lot, you can create an entire game. But when you want to just learn uh, Unreal for ArcVis, that's one thing. Let's switch out for this thing. To a certain amount for like one centimeter is going to be fine. All right, so let me isolate this thing and I want to get these four edges. Ring, give them one individual uh, smoothing group. I get one individual group. So when I put on a turbo smooth with the smoothing groups, Two iterations, third one to smooth it out. If we want to have it this way, if not, we'll just leave it like that. Or if I don't feel particularly lazy for this thing, uh, for the high poly, I can just go in and manually actually put in the uh, supporting edges. But for now, we just want to create the low poly for this thing. So that's okay for now. All right, so uh, move the corner over there like that and create one more copy of this side. And snap it here. Yes, it can be used for architectural uh, tours as well. It can be used for uh, AR, VR, pretty much a full on uh, package for everything. Uh, let's, go, let's get this thing about there. Snap it over here. And slowly we're to get the shape for this thing. Now, even though it's really uh, everything is in boxes, since this is uh, made out of wooden planks, the high poly for this thing is not really going to be that uh, hard to create. It's going to be rather quick. So let's get it like that. 
everything is within the uh, parameters for this thing. So for the paddle, it's again, very simple because it's made out of uh, a plank. So let's go with it. Uh -huh. So on 40 length, let's try it with 30. Oh, well, no, 20. Okay. Uh, Maya tw uh, 2018 animation is fine and all, but uh, I think that nowadays uh, Unreal has basically gotten to the point where everything uh, can be done inside Unreal. Oh, what did I just do? So let's quickly add in one over there. Hey man, doing fine, just doing some modeling today. So let's turn one more edge in here. Now, get these, scale them inwards. Okay. Give this thing a show. Uh, the iClone uh, animation system was that the thing that I had the uh, iClone character created and stuff? Is that the same thing? One of the things uh, I can tell you right away is that uh, animation has never been my strong suit. Yeah, real illusion. Uh, yeah, I know that one. Uh, I actually worked with a company like a couple of uh, years ago. They were using the character creator for doing a lot of their animations and stuff. It was cool, but again, like I said, really not my forte animation. in here is a bit higher than what we have but if I take a look at my image I can see that the top of this battle has been cut off which means that I'm right where I'm supposed to be and for this it simply means that I can just get in here select this thing move it on the local and snap it over here and there we go. Now it's flush with the size of where we want it to be. All right, so great. Uh, I'm gonna hide this for now. So we have this. And the only thing that I'm missing now is the bottom uh, of uh, this piece and the anchor element. It shouldn't really be that hard to create. So let me check it really quickly. Hey Carlos. Ok. 
okay, but there's another problem. This thing is not supposed to go all the way to the back to there. So it's facing to about here. And I'm gonna have to make it. Hmm, actually, you know what? No. It's fine, but this thing is not supposed to be touching it. So this is telling me that my radius here should probably be a bit smaller. So I'm going to Yeah. Why do it's more like it? But for now, just delete this and once I'm finished, I'm gonna plumb it over to the other side. So I have to do it twice. Okay, we have that. Now let's really quickly add in some supporting geometry for these uh, pieces because it's really, really, really low poly at the moment. Uh, I have tried uh, Cinema 4D uh, a really long time ago. And, well, it was pointless for me to try and uh, use both Max and Cinema 4D, so I stuck with Max. I have seen some amazing uh, things done by people that are working with Cinema 4D, though. And I know that they, they have some uh, really cool uh, tricks in their software. But like I said, I really haven't uh, used it enough to really know my way around it. That's fine, so... That's... Too lazy. I'm probably going to end up putting a chamfer on the corners for these things because this is actually going to be a pretty big uh, element for our uh, seats and if I don't have a really nice chamfer to hold this uh, form, I'm going, to, I'm going to be missing out on some of the uh, reflections and that's something I really don't want to do. So let me just get all of these edges that are supposed to be like that. Which this would have been a lot better idea to do before I actually added in all of these cuts, but... Uh, Alright, so select everything, make sure all of them are selected. Now chamfer it. That was 0 0.2. And of course, now I'm going to have to deal with all of these little uh, screw-ups in my slide because I just... Ah, I do not like this. All right. Okay. So now we're going to do this, this the easy way, or the proper way. Oh, now I'm missing these. Damn it. All right, so these need to have a chamfer of two. Fine. Now select the whole thing going across. And I hate it because this is not connected with quads, so it doesn't know all where the edge is supposed to go or how far it's supposed to go. So I have to go in and manually select all the edges. And uh, Sarah, I'm cutting up uh, or I'm connecting the edges because uh, I want to get this thing uh, ready for baking later on. And if I have angons, that's going to be a lot of problems for me. We do try to keep down to having just quads. 0.2. So this is fine now, it's a clean cut. Clean cut over here. You know what? There we go. 
one, two, three, four. This is a flat surface, so no problems. Even if we, even if we do have some quads in here, or not quads, but uh, triangles. But in this case, we don't actually have triangles. Just one big quad. Like that. All right, that's fine. Those two sides are fine. That that one is okay. This one's okay as well. And what we want to do is select that edge and that edge, control click, give this thing its own splitting group, control I, their own splitting group, and this battle, or at least the low poly for this battle is okay. You're gonna put a turbo smooth on with the uh, splitting groups. Yeah getting a very clean cut and the only thing I probably want to do is select that edge, that edge and leave these two their own smoothing groups but that's not a problem. those two Have something wrong with my geometry somewhere? Is it quads everywhere? This is this is quadded. Uh, of course. Damn it. That's right, like this stuff. Is this gonna screw up all of my splitting groups? No. Nope. There we go. All right. What was just happening here is basically I did not. Uh, see, but when I was creating this, uh, you, what you want to generally do when you're modeling stuff is make sure you don't have too much difference in the size of the uh, polygons that you're creating. In this case, I had one huge polygon that was uh, basically stretching my whole model and it gave me that problem. In this case, we just quickly fix it this way. With a turbo smooth with a couple of uh, iterations, it's really going to give me that a uh, nice sharp look for the cuts. Even here, see, bit of a problem. And it's smoothing. issues for that edge no more issues in here we have that nice uh, conversion from the smooth to the sharp so everything should be more or less fine now okay so for this piece we basically have that thing now for these screws 
in here. I can actually add those inside the uh, the normal map, so I don't actually have to go in and model those. Or I can just put them on as a floater on top of the high poly model when we uh, do the baking. Whatever it comes easier for us. But for now, I'm just gonna maybe isolate here. And what I'm gonna do is copy this thing uh, locally. So, copy it once there, and then put it some the center in there. There you go. Uh, that's actually a pretty good question, Galuda, because I like doing this thing as well. When I'm uh, working on something, I like to listen to other people work as well. So I guess that's something that a lot of us 3D people have in common. Even when we're not working, we like to listen to other people work. I do not know why, but we just do it. So mirror this thing in the X. Copy now. No. So hmm. all right. Let's not do it that way. Let's stack this just like those two. Yeah, that, that did me a lot of good. It's a professional deformation. We all do it. And one of the things that I do love about live streaming and watching other people uh, live stream is every time they uh, get stuck somewhere, it's like how they uh, find a way to get unstuck. And sometimes they get to see some uh, pretty unique ways of doing it. You know, people do have a tendency to surprise you from time to time. Now move it all the way down there like so. Okay. So we have the back side for our bench. We have uh, the seating arrangements. Is this thing is supposed to be like that, which I think that the five centimeters here is a bit too high. More in terms like this. It's fine. Let me get this thing really quickly. Put in that, um, yeah, it's always fine. Just take another one. And actually, you know what? Let me just try and do it like this. Drop in a chamfer modifier and see how this thing is gonna deal with it. A 0 0.5 and a 10 second 0 0.5. Yeah, we can do it like this. It will give me all of the necessary uh, edges and a simple fix on this side just to make sure that we don't have an uh, end down in there. There we go. I don't really have to deal with fixing anything else. Even I have that uh, change in here and it's quadded, so everything is everything worked out just fine here. Everything is fine on the top. Cool. So I can select all of these, uh, put in a auto smooth of like 10 and auto smooth. Yep, like that. So we put a turbo smooth on with the smoothing groups. It's gonna look crap. Mm. Okay. Ah, 
ah, we can deal with this. It's not going to be uh, anything complicated. All right, so so far we have a uh, decent low poly model. I'm not even uh, in on the first level of detailing, but it's cool. So let's quickly add in this uh, piece over here for the bottom. And it shouldn't be that hard to do. So all we gotta do is go in here, take a box or a plane or whatever you wanna work with. Uh, let's try it off with a plane. Uh, since this is gonna be a bit of a thick, thicker, so let's try with a five centimeters as a base in here. Now, uh, the thing here is that from what I'm seeing, uh, it's probably gonna end up this thing to be a bit lower, something like here. And the thing is going to be lower. This is going to be about the center. And I can just put in some edges and try to get that shape that we have in here. Now, uh, ideally, I would have had the blueprints for this thing, so I can uh, basically just uh, draw out a little spline around it and just give it some uh, thickness. But in this case, we're just going to eyeball it. The eyeballing part is not going to be too hard. Just uh, put in one edge. Actually, you know what? Just so that I don't have to do it twice, I'm just going to go in the middle. And only work on this side. So I'm going to do it right there. It's going to be up. That's fine for this thing. Delete that. Put on the symmetry. Flip it around like that. And before I do that, I don't want to have this uh, sharp of a stop here, so I'm just going to move this thing upwards a bit like that put it there and now what I want to do is I want to make it so this thing has a bit of a dip where this wheel comes in so to get that I'm going to select all of these guys now this is going to give me the thickness and then all the way up Uh, dude, I try to stream uh, at least twice a week, and I stream on Tuesdays and Thursdays about this time that you're just right uh, on right uh, right now. Uh, if I have the time, I create some uh, tutorials on YouTube. Uh, lately, I haven't had that much time, hence my lack of uh, tutorials. But I do have a few things that I want to uh, make a tutorial about. But I guess once I get a bit more free time, probably going to end up uh, finishing up those two ideas that I have. This is not starting to annoy me. Okay, so now let me just see how this thing is going to look like when I put it on the shelf. Really show it's fine. Put on a uh, added holly. Well, actually, before I do that, let's see, just see if I put a chamfer on this. Where is going to do the chamfer? So it's going to be zero point oh hell no. Uh -uh. I'm going to work that way. Okay. So more geometry. Here before I geometry. When I hold down shift and uh, with my split, uh, hold down shift and uh, this is what I'm using, I'm using the split loop. And when you hold down shift, it's basically like you put a set flow to it. it it's giving you that look. There we go. Okay. Lower. 
there. Now I can see exactly where this line is supposed to follow. Not bad. Wait for something like this. Okay. So on top of the symmetry, I did poly. Hello to Ukraine as well, man. Welcome to the stream. So select all of this. And since this is going to be a mirror to this size, I'm just going to use uh, one side to do the chamfering. And then just use the symmetry on the other side. So chamfer, but that's a very, very small amount to get in between. Like this, try a chamfer type of a 0 0.5. Let's try with a smaller amount here. That's 0.2 or 0 0.1 even. All right, this is better. I go and put this in the symmetrical object. And now when I put on a symmetry, it's supposed to be on the Z axis. It's gonna be mirrored to the other side. So on top of here, another uh, poly, remove the middle one. this piece so it's even though it's uh, ah no 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 here we have a problem we get this thing across like that okay so now when I put on a turbo smooth with the smoothing groups on it's gonna have a bit of problems, but it doesn't matter. Actually, I don't even need the smoothing grooves for the turbo smooth because we have proper uh, support edges. So everything is gonna be just fine. You can see a very smooth look for this thing. Great. Now let's really quickly go in here and and then one more edit poly. And this edit poly is gonna be basically to help me with uh, adding in some support edges for the, these cuts. So go on here and go from one, two, there we go. So now when I put on a turbo smooth on top of here, the two iterations get a very, very smooth looking uh, wheel which is similar to what i wanted to get like uh don't look at this uh as it is right now because it's very smooth because all of these imperfections will come later on from the actual material when we just, uh, start doing this thing in uh, substance painter for now we're just trying to get the shape or the uh, base for this thing so uh from what i can see in here on the corners, we have these uh, bezeled uh, corners, so everything is fine. Uh, 3ds Max V-Ray Learning Channel. Hello. Uh, okay, so now the only thing that I'm missing uh, from here is the middle anchor, and then we're gonna start adding in the ropes. The ropes is actually I'm gonna show you a, a really cool trick on how to do the ropes. I think we already did it in one of the uh, previous uh, streams, but now we're gonna see how we can add in those uh, things on a piece like this. So we have this thing on this side, so now we just need to have one anchor. So for the anchor, I'm just gonna go and isolate this uh, middle piece. and. What I'm going to do here, though, is put in another edit poly. And I'm just going to try and reuse some of the geometry they already have. So I have to start from scratch. 
So just get those pieces out of it. Go detach as a clone. And that will be all I need for that element. Now. So we have this. Now, what I'm going to do is select. Oh, actually, I don't need that page. Or I do need this one. I just needed to have the middle pieces. So that, that, damn it. So that one and that one, and that one and that one should be bridged together like that. Move this thing upwards. Move it down like that. Select all of these edges that we need to create the width for that anchor. And I think it's a tad bit too thick. So, what I'm going to do is move them closer together like that. Deselect that one, move it down there. That thing down. All right, now let's try and just get this thing to come as close as possible to around here. Okay, so the only thing that I'm missing here is probably what I should have done from the start and not spend my time doing this thing like so, and that is always do the thing that I keep telling everybody to use and that is use reference and here I am on live stream not using any reference when I have the silly reference and I actually even like this thing even more than the one that we have in here because this one is very primitive and this one looks more fancy and later on, I can actually even double use this one as an ornament in our bar. So this is going to be a double win. So let's do that. And not screw this up anymore. So for this, uh, let's just quickly check out what is the other anchor that I have. No, I have this one. So this one is better. What's the other one? Okay, I don't have any more anchors. This is the only anchor that I have. So let me really quickly check out the size of this thing. So details, it's just hit the plane. I know what the hell I'm doing or what's the actual size. I don't have to guesstimate anything because uh, I hate guesstimation. Every time I try to guesstimate something, everything just goes wrong. So there we go. Now I can go in and model on top of this thing and get the right shape. So let's go and just do the same one. Damn it. Again, a lot. And 
and press J so that the selection bracket disappears. I hate a selection bracket. Every single time I have to press J to make that thing disappear. So select it. There we go. Okay. This should be enough. Now I can just go in here and make uh, or fine tune this whole thing. Uh, this can be either smooth or better yet, just the proper bezier corner. And I'll just move the bezier handles. Get this uh, corner to turn right. This is fine, that can stay like that. Let's try with a smooth, oh hell no. No smooth will not work, so busy a corner. Some of these should work with the smooth, some of them will not work with the smooth. See, those two work just fine. This one should work, yes, fine with the smooth. This one, yep, works just fine. And these should work also. Yep, that's fine. Smooth. All right, this is looking just fine for now. I want to select my pivot and just move it on there and put on a symmetry to it. Flip it around. Uh, I forgot to put a symmetry on line. But what I can do is select that edge and refine it, connect to that edge so that get to there. And then only And of course, I'm going to do the connect so it probably will open up. Just don't give me an open. Okay, create line. Where is the refine? There we go. Damn it, what the hell? This, attach it with the other line, select both of those vertices now and weld them together. Select this, snap it down there, select those two, weld it together. So now when I put on an edit poly, since this is a closed one, it should give me a, yep, it should. This place is broken now. What the hell? Of course, it doesn't have this. Now this is starting to remind me of something I've done way back. It was a different uh, type of modeling, uh, gauge modeling for spines. Uh, an old way of doing stuff. Not just refine, just go ahead and Actually, right, but everything is see, everything is just fine. The only thing that uh, that I wasn't seeing for, for some reason, uh, since two vertices are taking the same world space, you sometimes get that uh, issue you're not seeing it. Now, I want to do something here to fix up my issue with uh, the really, really dense 
do that. And I'm going to select it like this. Now we're going to do a bit of cut ups to help me with holding this form. And I want to see if this thing is going to work in a way that I think it's not really meant to work. <laughs> and that is going to be to remove all of the vertices, but I'm going to save before I do this because this might actually make Max crash. I was not, I shouldn't have deleted that middle part, but whatever. Select all the vertices, vertex cleanup. Let's see if this will work this way. Clean it. Yep. <laughs> this thing will work this way. This is amazing. All right. Now I'm going to open up my old save because if I don't do it this way, it could crash. All right. So, yeah, that's fine. Move that poly. I did poly back again. Select this half from this side. Delete. And now. In here, just put in all of these. Uh... It's gotta be an easier way to do this, but whatever. Just for now, I'm gonna cut it up like this. Uh, believe it or not, this is actually going to work. It's not the right way of doing it, but that uh, CC cleanup will make this thing work. I'm gonna give it some. Uh, some geometry to hold the form and all of these in between the vertices they're gonna get cleaned up so I'm just trying to get it to the rough estimate of where the form should hold but that's what I thought as well that this was not gonna work but I just checked something and I think this is gonna work if it does work it's gonna work. If it doesn't, well, hell, we're gonna do it the right way. But for now, I'm just gonna try and see if. No, actually, you know what? If I leave it like this. And now, cut in some more. I'm honestly curious to see if this thing is gonna work. This is not by no means the right way of doing this, but whatever. I'm curious to see if it's gonna work. Now I have all of these unwanted uh, vertices. So what I'm gonna do is convert to Medical Poly, select them all, and with the Vertex Cleanup script, clean it. Remove all of that. <laughs> and what I'm left with is something I can use. And collapse these two. So we have a plot in here. We have a crappy triangle here. So let's see. Do a quick cleanup on that thing. But nobody likes to have that thing here. So now put a symmetry, put a shell, and voila! It worked. See, I told you that thing was going to clean it up and leave us with uh, a geometry that we can actually use. And the great thing about it is it's all quads. Well, most of it is quads though. You just do a bit of uh, refinement on the places where I just lost a bit of uh, geometry. Is this part in here? Just on shift. In here, though, I still have to do a bit more cut-ins like that. Remove that edge. And this is about 
there. Another one in here. And there we go. We actually got that thing to work just fine there. So one more edge in here. One there. Hey Vlad is love. Okay, so we got that thing done. Put the symmetry on and the shell modifier on. We got our anchor. Right, unfreeze all. And we can just move to the side. Actually, you know what? We can do it that one. No, I will no longer need it. Make this thing smaller. Hmm, since actually, you know what? Come to think of it, this can be uh, used as an ornament, but when you're actually using it for an actual uh, seating, this thing is giving it structural stability. So it probably should be flush with the base here. So for this, really quickly, There we go. Now it's sitting exactly where it's supposed to be at. The bulk of it is putting on the top and the bottom. It's resting just fine. So I can just go in and ever so slightly delete half of it and just move the rest of the vertices in place. So they're on the bottom and on our table here. To about I think this is gonna be just fine, I guess. Alright, so symmetry, flip, over to middle poly. Alright, cool. So now the only thing that it's left to do here is give this thing a bit of a chamfer for the edges. So I want to save first before I do anything else. So I did poly. one thing uh, or one side and then mirror the result on the other one. Uh, if I use the chamfer modifier in here, it's going to give me some really weird uh, cuts, as you see. Because this thing is like a Frankenstein made out of a lot of weird ways. Or a lot of weird... Uh, uh, see, see this thing? Uh, stuff like this that annoys the hell out of me. Collapse. Collapse. Okay, we yeah, have that selected. And I just want to select manually and make sure that I have all of the... Hmm. 
Well. Hey, Jeff. Uh, actually, you know what? That might work with the chamfer modifier with a smaller. So maybe I'll mix one out of the already. Yeah, see, it's giving me uh, these cuts in here. So, maximum of six. 15, really? Five. No. Uh, it's fine. This way, at least, I know exactly where I'm going to have the cuts. So later on, when I try to get this thing uh, exported out for baking, I'm gonna know exactly where my angle is gonna be. And since I already if it did uh, select everything that I needed, that's fine. Chamfer on a 0.1 in here on the quad. Chamfer with a 0.5. That's fine in there. It's gonna be a bit of a cleanup, but fine. This entire um, model, I started off in a, in a wrong way of doing it, and it's still going. But it's eh, it's like wrestling with a bear. Let's just quickly check out what we have here. We have a cluster screw up. surface so triangles should not be a problem if I get too annoyed with how I do this I might actually go ahead later on and oh see that's, that's a problem of course there's a problem it's Problem, you have a problem, all right? Collapse, collapse. There we go. Oh, and by the way, just like I said in the previous uh, streams, this is generally what happens when you model stuff you have never modeled before. You end up uh, doing some weird modeling ways of uh, trying out stuff and then you realize that you screwed up somewhere and then you don't screw up anymore like that but generally when you're creating a tutorial it's based based on something you've previously done so you don't uh, do any mistakes so people get the impression that the guys that are making the tutorials they don't do uh, any mistakes that's a very very wrong thing to think Everybody makes mistakes. That's how you learn. Especially when you're uh, like, if you're if you're streaming and doing something live, and I've had this thing happen to me while I was teaching in front of uh, the students. So I would start doing something, and so then something would go wrong, and then everything would just like it was Murphy's law. If something can go wrong, something will go wrong. But, you know, it's always about 
Uh, I know. Sean, I know, I know, I know, I know. Come to think of it right now, uh, this would have been a lot easier if I just did the simple box modeling, but whatever. It's done. I don't know. No, you're not going to do it. Eh, whatever. Now let's put on a center to object. Holy crap, I missed out on this thing. Whatever. So, jump for this. Uh, 0 0.1. How the hell did I miss? that edge. See, I oh no, that's not actually important. That's fine. But I missed this one. Damn it, and this one. Yep, more or less Simon. Just start with a box and get everything done properly without the, the screw-ups. Much more edge control. This is gonna, again, put me off for the goddamn triangle here. Remind me to hate triangles. No, can I do that either? No. There we go. Why did I start modeling this thing? Okay, get this thing to collapse by itself, get these two to collapse by themselves. It's fine. Uh, this is all about this. This stream kind of turned into a cleanup stream instead of a modeling stream, which is something I'm not really glad that it happened, but whatever, it, it happened, so yeah. So symmetry, get it under Z. No, not through that threshold. Don't weld anything. So any poly, get that little one out of the way. Delete. Don't you dare crash me now. What the hell? The what? Yeah, Simon, I will try with the chamfer thing. If that thing works, you know what? Let's just do it now. How far back? Okay, so sub after everything here. Now drop in a chamfer. You say decrease the minimum angle. All right, first of all, just. So this is a bit of a you no. Know. Oh wait a second, I actually know why this thing is doing this. It's that screw up that I had here. It's the collapse here and here is fine. Now again with the chamfer. <laughs> I'm gonna so laugh if this thing works like this. So let's run 50. Yeah, 
this thing, there is some cleanup here. And that cleanup can be avoided by just going in here and telling these lines to basically disappear. And move that thing up there, move this thing up there, get that thing out of the way. And let's try it like this now. Mm, yeah. Hey, I mean, the standard one will be uh, okay, but the thing with the quad is that it's giving me that uh, extra middle uh, uh, line, which is what I want. It's going to be a lot easier to bake the stuff in uh, the substance later on. I'm just kind of. Huh. Okay, we can. We can do a bit of a cleanup in here as well then. So get these to collapse and Yeah, but kudos to you, Simon. And since I didn't use this thing from the get-go. What ended up happening is I have to do a double run of cleanup. Yeah, amazing. Uh, whatever. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna clean my belly. Ah, dude, this is uh, uh, this is basically for this thing. It's in the middle part. So this thing that I'm modeling in here will be used for the uh, for this thing as well. So it's, uh, it's reusable, and plus we can just put it somewhere on the bar as well. So it's gonna be eh, it's gonna be something. <sighs> Once I start hating myself for doing this uh, unneeded cleanup in here. So that's, you know what? Fine, whatever. You want, you want to have that thing? There, you can have that quad. Collapse. Collapse. Don't screw up the bottom. Uh, that's, that's fine. I can live with this. It's going to be a weird fake. Problems there. Here is more or less fine. Now, first of all, a symmetry on the what axis is this? Okay, so flip. That should make it so it's symmetry on both sides. And what the hell is this? The symmetry on this time though is going to be on the z axis. And God damn it, no, do not do that thing. Center to object. Symmetry on the z axis. Oh, yeah. Uh, if anybody, just like Sean said, imagine this you are doing this with somebody on your back, and that somebody. Is your boss and he's yelling at you why this thing is not finished and the greatest thing is once you tell him that uh, you spent uh, two hours moving vertices 
and he's gonna be like, why is it so hard to move two dots? It's 890, nothing too fancy. The thing is that uh, the idea here was to make this thing a low poly, but even as such, it's 900 polygon just for this thing. But whatever, it's still low, low enough. So if I put a turbo smooth on, put the smoothing loops on, and the smoothing loops are not done, it's gonna look like shit. All right, so I'm gonna do that and the oscillate. Now, put it in there, go center to center, X, Y, Z. Now, what is this? What the hell is this? Ah, it's a smoothing problem. Whatever. Yeah, whatever. 900 is my low poly. Not really low poly, but the thing here is that we're not making a low poly for a game, we're making it for visualization, so it's supposed to like really hold up its form when it's like really close up to the camera, so it's whatever. It works, it's gonna work. Now I need a selection of, let's try to attend. Isolate again, just so I know exactly what I'm selecting. So go once. Just shrink. Okay. There we go, that's fine. But I also want this thing to continue this way. All the way up here. portion here and put that thing on just like that thing on mm, more or less on the else is touching just do it one swimming loop turbo smooth and smoothing groups there we go much much cleaner it's gonna require a bit of uh, cleanup, like stuff like this. But again, this is gonna work just fine. It gets down to our smoothing groups and stuff. What the hell is this? didn't cut in, right? Yes, you did not cut in. <sighs> Welcome to one of the weirdest and dumbest things that happened to a 3D guard. Alright, so that's fine. It's cleaned up. And just removing those edges just screwed up everything that I did for the smoothing groups. Amazing. Ah, whatever. Okay, we have this thing for this piece now the only thing eh, it's nearly a code red whatever it worked in the end we have this silly little whatever model so i have this thing and it all started off with just me trying to make this thing but honestly the reason why i didn't want to create this thing is because it looks like something else and if you do not know what this thing looks like, 
I'm really, really, really uh, glad and you have a very uh, pure soul, but to me this looks like something else. Now, what do I do with the rest? All right, so for this, we only need to add in uh, the ropes. And that should not be hard at all. Just get this thing in. Simon, if I say what I mean, YouTube will demonetize me and it will probably send me to hell. So I'm not going to say nothing. I know nothing, I say nothing. Alright, so edit poly. Let's just do it like this. One of these, create a shape, make it smooth. Interpolation is way off. No, I'm not gonna do it this way then. So, what we're gonna do is go on a circle like this. And then the center is gonna be something like that. So, this is gonna be like that. And now, what I want to do is Put in a helix. So something like this. And now I'm going to check to see how big this helix is going to be. Five by five. How many turns do I need? See how big this thing is supposed to be. Let's start three by three. Okay, now I'm able to run on the viewport. Mapping coordinates is fine. And we got four of these. So now, what I want to do is just select my pivot only and align it to the center of this thing. So now, when I try and. Ah, damn it! What the hell? I think it did, but I think that this thing does not. Uh, this is centered, so it's supposed to be effective only and centered to the center to center. The hell just happened there? It's 
Yeah, I probably should reset the X form, but you know what? I'm probably gonna do that. I'm gonna try and mon monkey around with this. Oh, crap. Okay. Reset X form. Right. Symmetry object. I'm gonna reset them on this thing as well. And align it center. What the hell? Why is it? Why is it doing this? Oh snap! Wait a second. This is not geometry. I'm gonna do. What the hell? Where, where did it go? I just should have shut my mouth and just get this thing to work. Ah. Oh, this is annoying. Okay, so let's now fix you up properly. Damn it. Poly, now you're gonna get reset as the wash should be. Now you're gonna get an effect pivot center to object and everything's gonna be just fine. I'm not gonna be listening to Sean McDermott anymore because he's full of great ideas, which in turn caused me to have to redo stuff again and again. Stay here, be well, and don't do any more problems. Fine, just now don't screw up center to object. Now align here, center to center, like that. Now go and give me 90, three copies. Go back to 45. Yeah, boy. Ha ha. We got that thing to work. And it should have started to work from the beginning, but instead, here we go. <sighs> All right. Okay. All right. It worked. Now. Select everything. Why, why are you going to move this to world? Now, mirror on the X as a copy. Now, before I do that, I'm going to hide everything, make sure that this thing is within the bounds where it's supposed to be. Selection. Yeah, no, Simon, I'm not doing that. No, I'm not redoing really anything anymore. Just select everything in here. Now, uh, everything in gray, no longer that colorful. So let me just quickly go in here and these guys and chamfer. Uh, okay, I think I'm happy with how this uh, thing is starting to look like. 
can I believe that this took me one and a half hour? Uh, all right, so we have uh, this piece, more or less. Now I want to see if I can, while I'm still here, if I can just do this thing, which is something that's really, really, it's really simple to create. So basically we can just reuse some of the stuff. So. What can I say? I'm the most interactive. I would be the most interactive Netflix guy around. All right, so put this thing in here. Now, the only thing that probably would be different is that this thing is gonna be a bit taller. So this should be a bit bigger. So just scale it upwards, I guess, and be happy with how this thing looks like. For Actually, you know what? I'm not going to scale it you guys. I'm still going to some more. But before I start manually adjusting this thing, I'm going to see how, how tall this thing is supposed to be. Nah, man. Sean is just fine. <laughs> so let's see. How tall is a table supposed to be? A, uh, table height inches, of course. I see some very cultural people just put in the actual height in a normal people's number, not inches. So seventy-six. Okay, let's do find. And just rise it up 76. Yep. Inches are a bad thing, man. It's like uh, a long time ago, an illiterate guy that didn't know how to like uh, count or whatever. He was like, we need something to basically count so they started counting in feet and inches and whatever and for some reason up until today americans still use them yeah but you see dude it's not just fine when you're doing uh, correct measurements Everybody should be using the, uh, the normal way of doing stuff, not that imperial way. Like, just for reference, in America, everybody uses uh, uh, feet and then for weight, they use really weird uh, pounds and stuff, except one, uh, one sort of people. And that sort of people is the drug, uh, drug mulers or drug... Uh, what the hell? What are they called? Like the... Uh, holy shit. I just got a brain fart. I forgot the name. Not a drug user, the guy that are selling them the drugs. There we go. My brain just stopped. That's fine. <laughs> Not the pharmaceutical dude. <laughs> oh. Let's see, uh, is the, the height is fine. Yeah, the drug dealers, the drug dealers, they, they, they're they using grams, they're using milligrams because they know if they screw up something, it's gonna cost them a lot of money. See, they're smart, they're smart. All right, what, what was I? Oh, yeah, I was doing a tabletop and then we started talking about drugs, weird. Okay, so this table is really simple, so just one big slab, so it's like what? Oh yeah, the metric system is a, a, a really, really accurate, because... Dude, drugs or drug dealers are the good example of what you should be switching to. It's money. 
<laughs> YouTube is gonna dem demonetize me because I'm talking about drugs. Oh man. Okay, so let's find some width. You know what? Let's just let's go with fifty by one. Somehow this thing uh, just turned from uh, somebody mentioning Netflix into an episode of Breaking Bad. How the hell did that happen? Okay, that's fine. So it has something up here, which is similar to what we have on the bottom. So I'm going to copy it here, just flip the hell around. Oh, we can, I can use the one on the bottom as well. Not bad. All right. Move it downwards. It snaps up from here. Oh yeah, this is going to be easier than I thought. Get everything in here. Mirror it on the X as a copy. Move it. Snap, this thing is actually just the right size. Oh, dude, uh, Russian is uh, the language you learn when you play video games. If you play uh, any sort of a uh, MMORPG or pretty much anything that has uh, online, People playing it, Russians will be there and they will speak their language and then you're going to learn one way or another. You're going to pick up on the Sukhobyat thing right away. God uses metric. <laughs> I like this. You see, this is this was supposed to be somehow. Uh, no, dude, I'm not Russian. No, uh, all of my Russian is pretty much uh, from playing Dota back in the time, uh, back in the days. Uh, make it smaller. 
Uh, just add in a couple of more really quick uh, changes. Russian is very helpful when you go out uh, clubbing and you see that Russian girl, that nice looking Russian girl and you think you can talk to her and then you do the mistake of actually going ahead and trying to get her to start drinking and then you realize you do not know how, you do not know how to drink. Got that thing. Got this one on the bottom as well. You have those two. <laughs> ah, okay. There we go. So I have those uh, two that are coming up here, but I think this would take a bit like that, more or less. Do one more on the X. Copy, put it in there. And we have those two as a simple base for this thing. And since my time is up for today's uh, stream, I'm just gonna say that I got this thing done. I'm gonna save it. Save this. Watch here. All right, hey, well, I can say one thing. Today's uh, stream was uh, unique. A lot of people uh, jumped in with uh, uh, a lot of weird, there you go. No more of that song. Jeff, you're no longer uh, hurting. Your ears is fine. Oh yeah, well, today, I really thought that this was going to go a lot uh, faster, but apparently it took us two hours to get these two tomorrow's done. Uh, next time we will continue, uh, I'm going to create uh, the high poly models for this thing and then we're going to bake them down and get this thing as an actual asset that we can either uh, reuse. Uh, we can probably reuse this thing uh, for either uh, visualization or unreal uh, okay so dude i do not know how long this will have to wait for the complete tutorial on ue4 because uh up until last time or up until the last time that i was streaming uh there was not even a unreal engine 4 tutorial in mind or not, not even a unreal 4 uh, section in mind this was supposed to be when i started out this was supposed to be a simple, small, very compact, um, you know, just a regular 
container house uh, type of a model. Then it kind of turned into a bar. And now it's turning into me modeling weird looking furniture for that bar. And then it's going to be back to going to Unreal. And then uh, I think it was Sean McDermott, the guy with the inches. He's the one that's responsible for me doing this shenanigans. Yeah, but you know, it's fun. All in all, I'm really enjoying myself with you guys and I'm having some fun, which is basically uh, the point of this thing. So next time would probably be Thursday, about the same time. And if there's something else, I'm, I'm probably just gonna finish up until then. So like I said, if I finish up that thing and I get some more free time, I might make this thing for like uh, three, or maybe even four, uh, four days a week. It's gonna be depending on if I have the time. So, since we have been going on for two hours and four minutes, I would like to th uh, thank everybody that was with me today. I hope I see you next time. I had some fun and take care everybody and have a great day. Bye-bye for now.